Hey, this is Russ. You know, it's been about two years since I did a car video on the highway. <laughs> yeah, I think I did it right uh, around when the uh, Russ's Right channel first started out. So I thought I'd do it today because today is quite an overcast day and I am driving... Uh, I don't, I don't know if this is considered rush hour or just past rush hour because we're moving pretty fast on the highway right now. Uh, time right now is about 8.26 a.m. on a Tuesday. So I figured, well, give it a try, see how it, see how it goes. And because of the fact that it's overcast, you should be able to see outside my windows fairly well. So you get an idea how the uh, Chicagoland traffic is. You know, we call it Chicagoland. <laughs> I don't know of any other city that does that. Uh, the greater Chicago area. You know, you can, you can call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, but, yeah, Chicago is kind of a, you know, just one city, but you've got a lot of suburbs around it. So we consider all this roughly uh, Chicago. So, I mean, if you, if you were to say, you know, where are you from? Most people would say I'm from Chicago, even though they're not from Chicago. <laughs> Which brings up another point. I grew up initially in Chicago up until uh, eighth grade that I moved to Morton Grove. And uh, since then, I've moved around quite a bit. <laughs> After I got married, I moved around quite a bit. So... Um, I, I guess the main places I've lived is uh, Chicago, suburbs of Chicago, and uh, San Diego. Now, even like San Diego, we lived in San Diego, but we also lived in, um, in uh, Oceanside, California, which is north of San Diego. But again, if you were to tell people where you're from, most people would probably say, I'm from the San Diego area, because not everybody knows where Oceanside is. Um, but it's big enough that, you know, I guess you could say you're from Oceanside. People would know it. But in general, people around the country would know San Diego more than they would know Oceanside. Anyways, um, I did a video just recently where I had some pizza <laughs> from Costco. I did it in the car. And uh, I looked at the footage. I said, yeah, that wasn't too bad. It was a little brighter outside at the time as I wanted to see what this looked like during an overcast day. So the GoPro overall did pretty well, I think. Um, good stabilization, good angle. Uh, overall, you can't really complain too much. The, uh, the mount uh, looks really good. So it fits on the on the windshield real well you know the one thing i didn't show you guys was a photo <laughs> of the camera being mounted on the window so you on the windshield so you don't really know what it looks like so i'm going to make sure i do that uh, today of course i can't take a picture of it now because i'm driving but later as long as i don't forget i'll show it to you and uh, i'll just use my cell phone to take a picture of the uh the camera on, us, on the windshield. The mount is really heavy duty. Uh, I think it's called Ram Mounts. It's the company Ram Mounts. Um, I looked it up on Amazon and uh, it showed that it wasn't available at the time. I don't know if that means that they sold out of them or they're not making them. I don't know what the deal is. But uh, yeah, very heavy duty. When you when you put it up against the windshield, that suction cup really locks it in place, and it's got a, a huge amount of uh, angles and things that you can adjust your camera for. So, uh, yeah, I I bought it because I knew that using that Canon G7X Mark II camera, which is heavier, needed something heavy duty to keep it in place so it wouldn't unmount itself from the windshield. With the GoPro, well, that's a lot lighter in weight. It's a lot easier for it to, to mount with. So, anyways, <laughs> I am on my way to, to, uh, to visit my daughter. And so, um, since uh, 
since I was going there, I figured I'd take you guys along with me. And she's quite a distance from us, and so it's a long ride on the highway. I'm not going to keep you the entire time, of course. We'll just keep you for a while and give you some, uh, give you some updates on things that are happening. So I asked the question uh, to everyone, what should the next videos be? Now, you might look at this and say, well, then maybe you should do these car videos as you're driving around. But, you know, I mentioned to you guys before that uh, in April, this vehicle is going away because I leased this vehicle and the, uh, the three-year lease is up at the end of, uh, not the end of, somewhere in, in early April, I believe. You know, here it is in, in uh, uh, October now, but even by September, um, the, uh, the company, uh, Hyundai, had contacted me already asking if I was uh, interested in, in either buying the car outright or doing something. So they, they get way early in advance asking you about uh, what you plan to do with the vehicle. Now, a lot of people have been, I think, buying the vehicle, selling it off to a third party and making money on the sale of their leased vehicles. I know uh, one of my, car, uh, my, my friends did that with his car. He, he had a Lexus and um, he ended up uh, selling it, I think, to uh, CarMax, I think. <laughs> So you buy the lease out, or the company that's interested in buying the car buys it out for you, and then you come out ahead based on how much money they're willing to buy it for compared to how much uh, money uh, Lexus was willing to sell it for. Now, this car is not as expensive as a Lexus, so uh, I don't think you're going to get as much money <laughs> for it. But apparently, inventory for cars have dropped dramatically because uh, I've, I've driven past various car dealerships, you know, just on my way going to different places, and uh, I noticed that the inventory in their car lots have dropped significantly, whereas you would see rolls and rolls of cars on their lots uh, to sell, the cars are no longer parked in the spaces, they're parked sideways, in other words, they're trying to fill up the look of the space by parking sideways rather than straight on into the parking stalls <laughs> and then uh, also the cars that are there aren't even the cars from the brand which tells me these are used vehicles so they're somehow they're getting a hold of uh, used vehicles and just putting that on their lot because their new vehicles aren't available anymore so the whole thing with the supply chain is really messed up car industry is willing to even, you know, uh, at least used car industry is willing to uh, buy your leased car from you so that uh, you make a few dollars and then they will resell it and make some money too. Now whoever buys this vehicle is going to come out way ahead because if you think about it, I've had this car almost three years. It'll be three years by April. Now how much would you think a person typically drives in a year? Okay, multiply that by three, and that should be roughly the mileage. Now, I would tend to think the average person drives between, let's say, 10 and 12,000 miles a year. All right? So here it is uh, in a few months. It'll be coming up to the end of three years for me. How many miles do you think I have on this car? <laughs> all right, let me give you some, uh, some background. All right? Um, Right after I purchased the car, several months later, I had a knee replacement done. Okay, so how much of uh, driving do you think I did on it? My knees have been problems for me for two years, okay? And then uh, on top of that, um, I stopped uh, working. I closed my photography school, and so I didn't need to go to work. How many miles do you think that would be in a period of almost three years? So if you take uh, 10 to 12,000 miles per year, 10,000 miles a year would make you 30,000 miles, right? Times three. 12,000 miles a year would bring you to 36,000 miles, okay? I think I have up to 36,000 miles on my lease to be able to use. I am currently at 11,863 miles. <laughs> 
So this car has not had, not even probably a typical year's worth of driving on it, even though the car will eventually be three years old by the time I turn it back in. So whoever buys this car is going to get a good deal because uh, it's got very low mileage for a car that will be roughly uh, three years old. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do by the time the lease period is over. I don't think you get a whole lot from for this Hyundai. This is a Hyundai Elantra that I'm in. Now I used to have two Lexuses prior to this particular vehicle, but um, I wanted an inexpensive vehicle I could drive around for, for work and to do things and uh, not worry about it. Uh, you lose the luxury of the Lexus, but the cost was a lot less leasing this than leasing a Lexus. So. Quite frankly, um, you know, you, I miss the luxury of the Lexus, but a lot of the functionality of this car is really good. I, I think I will really miss this car when it goes back because uh, the other vehicle we have uh, doesn't have quite the, uh, the package on it. So in this vehicle, I have uh, you know, a, a big uh, screen. I don't know how big the screen is, five inch? I don't know what it is, five or six inch screen. You know, you get the uh, Apple CarPlay on there, so I get my GPS on there, and you know, I can uh, make phone calls out of it. I can get my text messages off of it. I'm gonna miss all that. There's also, um, uh, you know, on the highway, I, I could I could drive this car without even holding the car's uh, steering wheel if I want, because there's there's um, uh, an assist function on here that keeps me within the lane. It's called. Uh, lane assist or something like that so what it does is there's a camera that looks forward on the car and looks at the two lines the lines on the left and the lines on the right and keeps you centered in the lane okay now the problem with this is if if, if the lines disappear or if it's uh, you know um, not marked very well on, on the road you could lose your lane assist so you still have to hold the wheel but I've uh, <laughs> I've tested this out where I've been on even on the highway and just uh, let go of the wheel and the car will turn when it needs to be turned. So it's it's quite impressive, quite frankly. I'm going to miss that. It also has uh, automatic braking. So if I'm too close to something and it feels that I'm, uh, I'm going to be uh, impacting the vehicle in front of me or something in front of me, it'll slam on the brakes for you. And I've seen that happen too where... Uh, I may have been a little bit closer than I should have, and then it starts breaking on me. So I'm gonna miss these advanced functions. I didn't have that on my Lexuses because uh, you know those vehicles were older, didn't have the technology back then. So yeah, even on an inexpensive car, this car actually does more than that the, the two Lexuses that I had. <laughs> uh, anyways. So, uh, yeah, don't think that the traffic is typical like this um, in all areas of Chicago, right? We are in the suburbs, and I am heading in the opposite direction of where other cars are going. So if you, if you look across the lanes, because I think you should be able to see out of my window here, you'll see a lot of cars are going by, but there's not a whole lot of cars next to me, okay? Um, and that's only because we are going in the opposite direction of what most of the other vehicles are going. You know, other people are driving into the city. Uh, I'm driving out of it. <laughs> I'm heading to another suburb. So this is why even at, uh, what time is it now? 8.39, traffic is still pretty decent for my side of the lane. Their side is moving pretty well, too. Uh, Chicago can get really tied up with, uh, with heavy traffic. Uh, so if you're near the city, you know, you're not in a suburb, you're near the city of Chicago, yeah, a lot of it's bumper-to-bumper -bumper type traffic, so you want to avoid that as much as you can. Anyways, that's about all I really wanted to say today. I wanted to, uh, again, give it another try. I won't have the vehicle long enough in the future to be able to do more of these. Uh, like I said, that my car is going to be going away in April. But uh, while I still have it, I figured, hey, I'd give it a try. Uh, I think it's fun. It gives me something to do. I get to talk to you guys again. And I, and I really do make, like making these videos because uh, it helps me spend time. You know, talking to you is more fun than just driving and not talking to anybody. 
And uh, oh, one more thing. Usually when I'm driving, I usually have music running in the car. Uh, I don't do that when I'm recording here, simply because of the copyright uh, issues uh, with YouTube. You can't have uh, music running in the background that's not um, you know, royalty free or something like that, unless you compose your own music. <laughs> so anyways, I appreciate you guys uh, following along again. And uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And I'll talk to you guys next time.